Hello, DEF CON! So I gotta tell you, this was an amazingly fast year for me. It feels like we just opened this in Penn and Teller, and now we're sitting in a room across the hotel and I'm telling you goodbye. So I'm gonna cry. Don't cry. <laughs> Um, since we have so many more people in the room and I can actually s sort of see everybody, can you raise your hand if this is your first year, please? All right. Big hand for yourself. All right. For everyone else, I promise you we will try to make this as uh, short and painless as possible. So, in the interest of time savings, I am going to uh, move on to my thank yous. Um, my name's Russ, and I am the acting chief of operations for the conference this year. Thank you, Banshee. Um, it was actually an accident, so I'd like to throw a shout out to our boy Lockheed. Um, he had a family emergency, so if I get a round of applause for Lock. This is actually his first DEF CON to miss in 20 years. Yeah, so it's a pretty big deal. What? Oh, sure, now you won't say anything. <laughs> Chicken. All right. So um, first I want to say my voice is my passport. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Some people got it. All right, so um, we have a lot of people that make this conference happen. You know, if you've been here for any amount of time, you can remember back when we counted ourselves in hundreds or less and not in tens of thousands. So it's, uh, it takes a strong, intelligent, and uh, proactive team to make this happen. So I can't mention all of the names, so I'll apologize now, but I do want to mention um, the people and the groups that make this happen. So from administration, we've got Nikita, Neil, Romer, and we have Will, and we also have Lost Boy. And so I'd like to get a round of applause for them. <laughs> on, the on the production team, we've got Cheryl, Comp, um, and a whole slew of people that are running around making sure that the trash is emptied of all the crap you guys have thrown away and you guys throw some crazy stuff away. I'm not even going to list it. I don't know where you got some of this. So, um, <laughs> round of applause for production team, please. So for the rest of this, I'm just going to kind of read everything off and we can applaud everyone at the end because I've got about 15 groups and I just realized it's going to take me about a half hour if we do it this way. Thank you. <laughs> so um, for registration, we've got C Stone and his team. For speaker ops, we've got Agent X and his team. Woo! For swag, we have Secret and his team. <laughs> For the red shirts, we have CJ, Flea, and their team, and I'd also like to shout out to Priest, who's helped me on more than one occasion this weekend put out some fires. Uh, contest, we have Hackajar and Coleslaw. Uh, for villages and parties, we have Grifter. For QM, we have Major, and we have Tom. And I, I think there's actually a song about that. Yes. Uh, for radios, we have Krasi. Yeah. For dispatch, we have Heather and her team. Yeah. For the knock, we have Effen and his team. Yeah. For press, we have Nicole and team. For vendors, we have Wiseacre and all the people that help him out. I also want to thank um, Highwiz and the rest of his team for putting on a great DC 101 this year. And for everybody else I did not mention that is on staff, I'd like to say thank you. Um, for my first year to ever actually step up and be uh, the man in the hot seat, you made it incredibly easy. And most of all, I want to thank every single one of you because we do this because we were in your seat once and we freaking love DEF CON. So thank you all for being here. All right, I got one more item of business and I'm going to hand it off to DT. Um, where's Eddie Mize? 
All right, so Eddie Mize did all the faces of death. How many of you saw our faces of death? <laughs> faces of death con. Woo, drink. All I have is water, sorry. Aww. Hey, I've been sober all weekend for the most part. Um, so he did a whole bunch of artwork, and they've gone through the trouble of having a whole ton of us sign this. And this was done under the guise of donating this to EFF um, or Hackers for Charity and raising funds. But actually what we've done is we've all signed this for Eddie as a thank you. And so if we could get a round of applause. I don't know what to say about that. You guys are all incredible. Russ, DT, everybody, thank you so much. And so with that, I'm going to hand it to uh, the Dark Tangent. Yeah! Woo! Yeah, I want to just echo what Russ has said. I mean, this is a community, this is a team sport right up here. You just see some of the team players, but we have about 300 volunteers, not counting just attendees that do it themselves and make stuff happen. And uh, somebody came up to me just before this started and he said, you know what, this is my third DEF CON and the, the first one I went to was, I didn't know what to do and I was really kind of antisocial and the second one I started to get the vibe and he said, but the, yesterday I was partying, I was dancing and my wallet fell out and I lost my wallet. And then an hour later a dude called me and returned it and he's like, this is the best community, you know, we've ever had. And so that's just super cool. Yeah. Okay, so it's a space to advance? Space to advance? Or the arrow. Arrow key to advance. Okay, so that's the spirit we're really trying to build here. So a couple of things um, I just want to mention for next year. Hey, that was me. I was supposed to shoot those at you. Um, so th some statistics. This year I started uh, a couple of years ago, you guys might have noticed, I did a media server. And uh, this year it turned into an engineering problem. How do we get data to you so quickly that you're not downloading all con long? So we bought these big disk duplicators and we started what next year is going to be a data duplication village. And we served up 300 four terabyte hard drives of data. And uh, we could have done more but uh, two of our disk duplicators failed. 3% um, failure on disks and the number one culprit seemed to be western digital green drives. <laughs> so just uh, be careful if you're using those might not last very long. Um, I want to call up a couple of people that have run some services. I'm going to let them step through some slides and, uh, and let you know what's been going on. First up, I want to get Effin ready. Where are you at, Effin? Effin's the man for the DEF CON network that we all rely on. And he's put together some statistics for us. So here we go. Excuse me. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Oh. We have a little tradition here at DEF CON. Some of you may be familiar with it. <laughs> you know what? We've been thanking first time speakers for the entire week. I think it's time we thank all you first time attendees. So, DT and Russ, Russ, could you come up here? A shot for the first time attendees. Thank you so much. To you. Thank you. Hello, DAFCON. Still alive? So let's do this really quick for the sake of time. Uh, we're going to make available the slides on DEF CON networking.org. Um, there's a link at the end. So, especially for the first timers, what do we do? Uh, wired infrastructure, the CTV for the drunk ones, and wireless for the hangover ones that are <laughs> able to make it to the floor. Um, what's different from last year? Uh, we got more gigabits. Um, so we did some upgrades. Thanks, DT, for doing some of most of this, right? So we got a new firewall with two gig interfaces, and you can read all, all of this. Um, the wireless gear, we got some new supervisor modules for the Aruba gear for the controller that we have. That way, so the core and the media server that DT brought was really awesome. And you guys, he's going to talk more about that, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'll leave for him and the core switch as well. 
So for the first time, we're going to actually see the network topology of DEF CON. This is the network topology. <laughs> so the airplane is the network, and you guys are around it, right? We have some good attendees and some not good ones. At the end of the day, it's a freaking hacking conference, right? <laughs> so that's what we do for the, all week. And tonight or today, we, we feel kind of like this. But it sort of worked for the most part, um, as far as we know. So pre some challenges that we usually have, and they change every year. This year was, again, iOS devices with 802.1x and certificates. That's why it took us a little while to put the Wi-Fi Reg server up there, because we want to make it easier for you guys. Uh, I'll put some notes uh, on the slides later. And there's never enough time, right? Wednesday night, we plan to go to dinner, and we're like, you know what? Dinner is going to be at the knock, and we keep working. So that's how it is. During the conference, um, some some of the devices not really behaving like they should, um, unplugged APs, and all the good stuff. Some of the stats, that's what people like to see. So we, we have a 120 megabit uplink to the internet. We, I think, reached about 100, so it's not too bad. Uh, but the internal um, amount of data that we transferred was way, way bigger than the past few years. So congratulations to you guys for for using it. And we had like about 4,300 devices registered. That doesn't mean much or doesn't mean anything, but it's good, right? It's a lot of stuff. Wi-Fi st statistics specific to the wireless network, we have about 50 access points, 41 as uh, access points providing service, and then 10 as air monitors just watching what you're guys doing. And we get about an average of 600 users per hour during con time, um, and attacks about 2,000 per day. <laughs> All different kinds of attacks. Oh, I know you can. Trust me. I'll go back to the Porsche slide. Uh, DCTV broadcast to the real uh, rooms. How many of you watched? How many of you watched? Yeah. Pretty good. DCTV. These are the drunk people. <laughs> So uh, one of the things that Video Man did, he played the DEF CON documentary. And for the next year and the following years, if we get original content from you guys, we'll be, we're going to be more than happy to, to play that. So keep that in mind for next year. This is the NOC team. Not going to list everyone, but we have the old timers. We have four new noobs that helped with every single thing, including, including getting drunk on the off hours, on the three hours that we didn't work. And I want to thank everyone here. I want to thank DT, Will, who helped us a lot. Cheryl is always on every single email that we send to everyone. Caesar's staff, uh, Encore, you guys. The one random guy that shows up every year and drop, drops some snacks for us, and we're still alive, so that's good, right? <laughs> and we get some feedback as well during the conference, and that's, some of them are very constructive. <laughs> so here's how you get these slides later. Give me a day or two to put it there. Um, and this is the email to send the feedback. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay, this year uh, we have a new contest that uh, longtime goon Waz put on, and I'm going to introduce him. It was our TD Francis X Hour Film Contest, and we're going to show you the winner. So, Waz, take it away. <laughs> Whoa. That, that person's had too much to drink. <laughs> First off, it was a team effort. My buddy, uh, I don't drive cars. Yes, that's his handle, and I guess he doesn't drive cars, and he wants everybody to know it, but he is supposed to be walking up here right now as well. So okay. he's not here. Any rate. Okay, so this is the first year of what we hope will be a multi-year project, the T.D. Francis X Hour Film Contest. It is a, a five-minute film contest this year. The attendees or the team, registration teams show up, register. They've got five hour, uh, 48 hours to make a five-minute film from the time that they register. This year's genre was science fiction. We had seven teams registered. Four of them provided awesome, awesome entries. Um, and we even had two celebrity judges. 
crap, where are my glasses? I can't see. <laughs> you want to plug, plug in? Or? Uh, <clears throat> so we had uh, William Eubank at the signal. And, and uh, Brian Knappenberger, who has directed The Hacktivists, The Internet's Own Boy, The Aaron uh, Swartz Story, which played this weekend. Right. So we. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, where's the uh, thing that I clickety clicked yeah, sure. it? Sure. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, great. Uh, and the winner is after we show you what. Okay, great. Um, this is exactly this is exactly the way we uh, research uh, rehearse this. Yeah, so you unplug it. And you got to plug it in. Play it. What are you trying to watch? Your I'm video? trying. To, yeah. Okay. Try turning it off and on again. <laughs> you know, we never played. Train, train. How many gigs did you get to hit the movie again? We'll play. All right. Okay. This that one. No, no, no. Watch it. Yes. So, here you read it. You get to read them then. Okay. Go ahead. Hang on. Uh, the sound, the sound on our celebrity uh, uh, director, who's going to announce the winner, is uh, messed up. So we're going to dub it. So. Hi, my name is Brian. Are you playing a video? Yes. Part? Yeah. Okay. My name is Brian Knappenberger, and I'm a director, uh, writer, director. We are losing. blah blah blah. Oh. Yeah. It's playing in the background still. Sci-fi has got to be one of the greatest film genres of all time. It's going. So it's pretty good. Cool. Oh, excellent. Uh, this year's 17 is the first ever TV Francis so X Hour film contest. Um, and it was tough to choose a winner among the There it is. Eight. All right, I'm going to start it back at the beginning. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brian Knappenberger, and I'm a documentary writer and director. Uh, my recent films are We Are Legion, the story of the hacktivists, and the recent film The Internet's Own Boy, uh, the story of Larry Swartz. You know, cheap sci-fi has got to be one of the greatest film genres of all time, so it's pretty cool to see it alive and well here at DEF CON 22. Uh, this year, seven teams set out to make films in the first ever TV Francis X Hour film contest. Um, and it was tough to choose a winner among the teams that competed. But one definitely stood out as representing the general mayhem, the incredibly high production values, and let's just say in-depth, um, massively sophisticated special effects we've come to expect. Um, <laughs> the winner of this year's contest is the Uber Lab team with Invasion of the Boonians. <laughs> Unfortunately, the winning team Uberland couldn't be Uber Lab couldn't make it. They're at Detroit Airport over right now. But it's, everybody say bye. Bye. Sign sign up next year. Everybody sign up next year, please.
went smoothly. Yeah. He did well. Yes, yeah, so that, that went really smoothly. Went All right. Really just, <laughs> so we need iHack Charities and uh, Den Hack. Who was going to talk about this? Where are you, Stealth? Nope. Get on up here. What are you doing over there? Pasta. Hey, what do I do now? Uh, oh, yeah, okay, do my thing, okay. Hello, DEF CON! Okay, well, let's see. We're all having a good time now. You know, I I've been involved in the fundraising here for some time, and it just... Uh, do I have slides? Okay. Oh, those are somebody else's numbers. Those are somebody else's numbers, yeah. Anyway, I've been involved in this for a long time, and... Uh, you know, it continuously amazes me on our community here and how, how willing they all are to help and share with others. And you know, whether it's returning a lost wallet or giving blood, uh, you all continue to excel and exceed everyone's expectations in that area. And you really deserve a big hand for the wonderful things that you've done. And I'd like to talk about a couple things here. Uh, one of the donations to, there's many charities, large and small. And one of, the, uh, one of the charities this year was a hackerspace called DenNet. And uh, with the help of Mohawks, they raised $230 to help that space. And we think that's great for them. Get them off the ground. Now, I know this is a long way from here, but uh, probably some of you know where Uganda is on the map. And it's a developing country. The people there need a lot of help. And, and back in 2007, John and Jen Long started an organization called Hackers for Charity. And they help nonprofits with you know, technology issues. They help them solve problems. They provide food. And re working with lots of people, thousands of students are being trained by them on computers and computer education to really prepare them for the future. And the future is coming soon for them because Google is considered wiring the place uh, their capital city with fiber. So they're going to have the high speed access and they're trying to give them those skills. So uh, money was raised for these people and I'd like to recognize uh, those contributors. One, uh, Hacker Fortress, all you Hacker Fortress players out there, gamers for a good cause gave $45 in there. And then of course the Mohawks are outstanding. Mohawks have raised $1,820 for the cause. There's, there's no doubt that Eddie Mize is, uh, is a pillar in our community. I guess that's the best I can put it. Because Eddie's raised uh, $4,100 for the uh, Hackers for Charity cause for them this year. <laughs> that brings us to a total of $5,965. But wait, that's not all. At the Hackers for Charity booth themselves with their t-shirts and all sorts of other good stuff, you guys really came out and they raised $27,604, giving us a grand total of $33,569. Thank you, DEF CON. Thank you all. All right, now we're going to move on to uh, EFF. Uh, they get a little bit more uh, screen time since uh, uh, there's a lot of people that do stuff for them. So we'll start off with uh, everybody else uh, besides the uh, big fundraiser. Uh, Hack Fortress, $145. Mohawk Khan, $3,660.76. It's pretty amazing. Uh, $42.20. That's the, th these were not fully tallied yet, so there's more in there than that. Info booth, uh, $928. Uh, Eddie, that's wrong. That's uh, $4,100 for Eddie. Um, half of that that he raised went towards uh, IHAC Charities. And DC Darknet, by selling the, the, the badges, uh, another $3,000. Um, is that right? Yep. <clears throat> and now we'll move on to one more event. So that's a subtotal of $15,933 for uh, EFF, but wait, there's more. Um, the summit, uh, at the door, we raised uh, $19,770, $2,579 in auction items, cash, there was a lot of credit charged, uh, $720 cash for raffle, $13,000 in VIP pre-sales, $2,500 in general admission pre-sales, uh, at the credit cards, whether it was door auction or whatever else, $9,775 for a in-room total of $48,351 plus, <laughs> plus the EFF booth raised another $10,000 while at that event. 
uh, for a grand total of $58,000 raised just in four hours. Wow. So. So we want to point out that was a Thursday night party hosted by Vegas 2.0. Special thanks to all the staff that made this happen. It was the 10 year anniversary of that party. Uh, up until now we raised $175,000 in the last nine years. So if you tack this extra $58,000 on that, you can do the math. We raised a metric ass ton of money at this party over the last 10 years for the Electronic Frontier Foundation. So, so far we have a grand total of $64,284 plus their own booth donations of $58,711. So we broke last year's record of $100,000 by about $14,000. Thank you all very much for your contributions to Electronic Frontier Foundation. <laughs> and here from the Electronic Frontier Foundation is Kurt Opshall to uh, receive you. To say thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so great to be back amongst this community here. Your support from the individuals who came up, become members, to all the wonderful people who have found creative and wonderful ways to raise money for us. It's the support from this community that really helps us keep going and you're helping us defend the internet, defend the hacker community and we can't thank you enough. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, blood code. Jason, come on. You got to move faster than that. Jason, Run! We're going we're gonna to cut off your, uh, your hugs. Give him a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not the first time that's happened, but it's one of the best. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thanks DEFCON for, uh, for once again being a great community and, and trying out and helping out with blood code. Got bad news, we only had 90 units this year. It's like there's no other way to, to pussyfoot around on that one. Uh, I do know that I've talked to DT recently and we're going to be creating a bleeding edge track next year where we're going to actually have um, volunteer speakers come out, we're going to have a screen for entertainment. It's going to be like interactive entertainment because you're going to bleed and you're going to see entertaining stuff. So that, I think this should work out for everybody. Um, yeah, you're going to learn while you bleed. So that should help. Um, I'm not going to take up too much more of the time, but I think we need to. I think it's important. One, per, um, Julie, who couldn't be here, the one that runs uh, the blood donation center, said that she actually had some people coming up, new timers that weren't familiar. Like, why are we having a blood code? Why are we having a blood drive? Who's this blood code person, what it's about, isn't that over? And the key thing is we're having a blood drive because it helps. Hackers aren't just about fixing computers, we're supposed to be fixing everything that we see wrong with something. And that's what it's about, it's trying to do something good, it's trying to show a positive impact, it's showing people that don't know maybe how to hack an airplane or hack something like that but they're seeing this stuff out and they're seeing good things come out of this conference and one of those things is they're helping other people that they're never going to see live by donating blood and that is a beautiful thing and that's one of the things that we should be showing our community and what we do. So thank you DEF CON for hosting that, thank you for being so supportive and thank you guys for actually bleeding for the calls. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, over in the Crown Theater, kind of separate from all you crazy people, uh, we ran Roots Asylum, which is a nonprofit where we're teaching kids age 8 to 16 how to love being white hat hackers. This year we had 400 attendees, their kids and kids and their parents were there. So record number again. And what's a little different about the kids event besides that they're smaller and sweeter is that it's about 50% girls, uh, which is really great to see. So what we try to do is, is bring in the most famous, best hackers in the world to teach the kids. This year we had 30 presentations. Uh, some of my favorite were Deviant and Howard taught the kids how to elevator hack. 
Uh, Thomas Cross, who's been here since DEF CON 1, taught all the kids how to break into lawful intercept machines. <laughs> Charlie Miller taught us how to hack cars, Renderman, airplanes, Caesar, traffic control systems. Parisa, princess of uh, security at Google, actually donated 300 Chromebooks. So every single kid got a Chromebook and then she taught them how to pwn them. Uh, uh. We, um, I'm always looking for more kids speakers. So if you've got kids that have some amazing research, please have them reach out to us on the website, roots.org. This year we had two kids that presented. Um, Esau actually taught all the kids how to do Metasploit. And, and uh, Muffin Boy uh, talked about white hat hacking. We also had six contests this year. Um, one of them it is now an official DEF CON contest. You'll get to hear more about that in a little bit from Chris, the social engineering contest. We also had lock picking, name that PLC, code breaking, hacker jeopardy, and land sniffing. Um, it's pretty interesting. We have a lot of adults come over to the kids' sessions and, and try to hack their way in. Because um, I think who doesn't want to learn from, from uh, Joe Grand how to hardware hack, right? Um, <laughs> and so uh, what we've done is we actually launched Roots TV. So if you can find us on YouTube and all of you here too can see what we've been up to. Thanks so much. All right, just an interesting note. I wanted to tell you, we kind of can uh, compile the statistics of how much time we put into this show just on site. And if one person in the audience were to work full time as much time as all the staff on DEF CON worked, you'd be working full time for four years just to make this happen. <laughs> so um, I'd like to get Hackajar and Coleslaw up here for the uh, Black Badge events for contest. So, uh, so for those of you who don't know, black badges uh, get you into DEF CON for life. And we've done sort of a reboot this year uh, for a couple of reasons. So contests that historically have gotten black badges aren't and contests that haven't are. Um, and so what we're doing is we're creating a black badge hall of fame where we're going back into our history because we realize like everything else, we're moving so quickly we're not capturing our history very well. So we're going back and figuring out every person that's ever gotten a black badge, what team they were on, what they did it for, and we're kind of trying to create a hall of fame for them. Um, and we're also trying to uh, be better about the amount of effort you have to put in to get a black badge. And so to keep everybody on their toes this year, no contest knew who was going to be a black badge event except for capture the flag. So for a lot of these people, they didn't even know. And so the contests were working extra hard to try to make it challenging and a really good game. And so a lot of the teams really stepped up this year and made improvements uh, with the added motivation. So Hackajar who watches over the contest is going to go through who the winners are this year and we're going to introduce some of the teams that have earned a right to entry for life. So Hackajar. All right, uh, you know, Coastal and I have been working really hard all con long. Uh, really, we not only have to make sure that the contests are a well oiled machine, all the vill villages are going, all the nighttime events uh, related to contests are going, but we also have to kind of spy on every single team and see uh, are they really bringing it as uh, con contest organizers and are they really bringing it as contestants. So, uh, so it's a lot of hard work between the two of us. So I'm going to let Coastal introduce the, the first uh, contest team to come up, which is Black all right, and uh, before I introduce the first contest real quick, I would just like to say thank you to the FCC, or FTC, excuse me, for coming out and doing the Zapping Rachel contest. How many people, raise your hands, have you heard about that or participated? Yeah. All right, for those of you who are not aware, the purpose of this contest was to help eliminate those annoying robocallers. So, I, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you, FTC people. I think they're up front, so let's give them a hand real quick. It's nice to be working with the government for once, I will say that. All right, and uh, without further ado, we're going to have the black badge. Deviant, come on up. Hello, hello, hello. How many people came to the lockpick village, learned how to pick locks? Yeah. How many people came to the DEF CON shoot and put a bunch of holes in things in the desert? 
All right, so they're both about physical penetration, and the big contest that we ran this year is the Black Bag Competition. It is a break-in, gather intelligence, and break-back-out-again kind of contest. Everyone who saw it, everyone who played it, everyone knows how much goes into it. You know it's really fun. You should all try it in the future. Follow the Twitter account that was in the program. It was really easy to qualify. We had five incredible finalists this year. In third place, we had Sexlut from Salt Lake, Utah. 120, uh, sorry, 1,297 points. Really excellent job. They did a fine job. A big applause for them. In second place, we had the Normative Deviants. I guess they were going to garner favor with me or something. That was 1,477 points because they were the only team to get this Fed device called a hot plug to properly jack a computer out of the wall without turning it off and hot, you know, switch the power. Big hand for the Normative Deviants. But in first place, we had our German friends, the Strange Invaders. Here they are, big hand. Over, fifth, over 1,500 points, virtually every single objective. They did the fastest time, six minutes and 50 seconds. They were in and out. They were freaking rocking it. And you guys are absolutely amazing. You're wonderful. And we have some wonderful things for you here. You got your Locketrons, right? Yeah. You also get this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deviant. And for everybody who hasn't been locked in, I can say it was as much fun as winning Cannonball, but half as illegal. So do lock picking. Right on. All right. Up next, we have Capture the Packet. Yeah. How's it going, everyone? All right. So this year we did the Packet Hacking Village. What'd you guys think? What? Yeah. All right. So one of our events there was the uh, Capture the Packet event, and it was chosen to be a black badge again um, this year. We did some ridiculous stuff again. Um, as uh, Team Brodio here, the first, pra first place winners, give them a hand. <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, one of our Stego challenges for the final rounds, um, after lots and lots of little rat holes all over the place, um, there was a picture of a key and they actually had to decode the pins on the key. Uh, <laughs> so we kind of mixed in a little bit of stupidness, but uh, we want to congratulate them. This is a, a brand new MacBook Air, and they're getting a black badge for it. And then, uh, awesome, here we go. And then for Dark Tangent, we have his Packet Hacking Village staff badge. Excellent. <laughs> now, so. now I can go into the room. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> Locked out. <laughs> But thank you, everyone. We're glad that, uh, that you all enjoyed the event. Thank you all much. Bye. Thank you. All right. Let's keep this party going. Uh, next up, we have the uh, DEF CON Darknet project. And uh, I'll let you guys know. Talk briefly what it is. OK. Who wants a t-shirt? It's one of the last uh, 36 uh, limited edition t-shirts we got printed up for the crew this year. So enjoy that. Uh, the DEF CON Darknet project was an MMO in real life that we said at DEF CON. And instead of talking to some guy with a yellow question mark over your head who sends you on a quest to go get like, you know, 14 virginal rat scrotums or whatever, um, <laughs> we send you on quests to go learn skills. Uh, things like learn how to crack web learn how to um, crack passwords, learn how to slaughter, that's what the kids were for, um, that kind of stuff. And it was a lot of fun. We got a fantastic response. We had over 330 people playing. Uh, 157 of them were actively playing. Uh, and we've got the top three that we're going to talk. But before I do, I want to thank my crew. Zero Altitude, Fish, Crux, Neon, Spetku, Fletch, Bunny, Skyria, Gatorbite, Gulu, and a last minute addition to the crew, F9. Thank you all so much. The other thing that, uh, probably the best part about this game that I've, that I've been told about is the diversity of the people who play the game. We have a lot of women and a lot of children who are playing this game. The whole point of it was to teach people, starting at assuming zero knowledge, and teach you how to do these things, as opposed to seeing how leet you already are. So in that way, it's kind of a unique game. So I want to thank everybody for playing that. That's awesome. 
Uh, in third place with 4,788 points was Caspian. In second place with 5,290 points was Deviant Satan, not to be confused with Deviant Olam. And first place, the guy was absolutely crushing it. We were looking through the d- database to make sure he wasn't faking it. 650, 600, 590 points was Silk. Come on up here, Silk. Thank you so much. Can I keep this? No? There you go. Thanks, man. And uh, best yet, we got $3,000 for the EFF. Thank you so much for buying all the kits. We will make more next year. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much. Oh, one, one more thing. One more thing. The DC Darknet is not just at DEF CON. You can play it online throughout the entire year. DCDarknet.net. Thanks. All right, up next we have social engineering capture the flag. Hey, how many people waited to get in the SCCTF room? How many? Come on. Shirts? Hey, are books still too hard to throw? Anybody want a book? Yeah. Okay. Hey, you said it wasn't too hard. Don't be a wimp. Okay, so look, I got like... <laughs> that was an epic fail. Okay. So I got a... I, okay, book, book, book. Book. Oh, yeah. I love the excitement. There we go. Okay, die for those. Okay, so listen. First things first. I, I got I to gotta thank, thank Dark Tangent because this year he turned the SC Village into an actual DEF CON track and we had like six or seven human-based speeches in there. Awesome, man. It just went awesome. You guys were lined up for like 45 minutes outside. So thank you. Yeah, and we thank recorded you. It, so. And it was recorded. So it will be on the DEF CON DVD. So that's awesome. Um, I got to mention the, the second place winners. So we had our SCCTF. Uh, Nico mentioned the thing for kids was now an official DEF CON event, so it was kind of out of roots, and in the DEF CON event, the kids rocked it. And then our SECTF second place winners was Brochial Engineers. Brochial Engineers? Brochial? Brochial Engineers, yeah. Come on, more pause than that. <laughs> they got some cool SE stuff. But now here's the really cool story. I got a minute and 40 seconds. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk faster. I am. Stop, stop telling me. Okay, so... Um, we, the, the, the team that we had, we had uh, um, tag teams. So they had to go in the booth at the same time and tag out and things like that. And what we had was the, the, the first uh, team, the guy got sick, you know, sick, DEF CON, and he couldn't make it. So we yanked the guy out of the audience and said, you're going to get in the booth and be this, this woman's partner, and we're going to give you a half an hour to prepare. And they won. I mean, they didn't just win. They beat him. Now, here's the best part. It's, it's his wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> news operators, come on up. <laughs> and the best part, the best part is the black badge. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a fun ride home, I guarantee you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next year. Maybe not. Thank you. All right. All right. Next up is Open CTF. <laughs> hey guys. Uh, so my name is Soen, and I'm part of Van. Van ran Open CTF this year. Uh, and OpenCTF is a Jeopardy style competition uh, where challenges range from every single person in this, con- in this conference can do it to like a very, very hard challenge. So uh, we, we had tons, tons of people really excited about this and we were really sad that this didn't happen last year. So we put a bunch of time, we got the contest together and uh, we had so many people wanting to play, uh, we, ran <coughs> we ran the competition on uh, modems. So we had people coming in and soldering together modems just so they could play with us. So uh, we had 31 teams compete and we had half a dozen countries represented in that. And uh, let me just go ahead and read off the scores. So for third place, we had an Australian team, uh, 4979, uh, with 3,700 points. 
Uh, we had a French team who their first time to DEF CON they played. Uh, Petite Bite with 4,200 points. And then our winning team, uh, Neg Nime, come on up guys, with 4,900 points. <laughs> <laughs> the souvenir is the backbone for all the telephone system used in the competition. <laughs> so thank you guys, thank you very much, and we welcome everyone to play OpenCTF next year. All right, I assure you folks, we're on the home stretch, we're getting there. Another black badge uh, contest event here is right here on stage, uh, Mr. Lost, to talk about uh, his contest. So those of you that have, uh, saw the 1057 room on the conference floor and were wondering what that is, if you wandered in at about 5.30 in the morning uh, several nights you would have seen a number of people working furiously on the ciphers that are all throughout the conference. It was part of the badge challenge. That, um, how many of you by chance solved the lanyard cipher this year? A few. So if you take a look at your lanyards on the back of them, there's a medieval numbering system uh, complete with Chinese and Korean monikers to give you the pattern to make a lattice work of all eight individual unique lanyards that you needed to weave together to produce a solution that drove you to a website but it wasn't quite obvious that it was a website. The clue was do not miss the point in Curious Codes, driving you to the URL curious.codes. And um, this is just an example of one of the many steps that the badge challenge took this year. I'm humbled every year by the ingenuity and the intelligence of the people that make it all the way through the badge challenge. It's a very difficult contest and it's, um, um, it's very humbling to me to see this. So the MLF guys, can you come up here like as quickly as you can because we're on a tight time. Run, run, run. So these guys are the Muppet Liberation Front. <laughs> Can you guys for like 30 seconds give a quick what it's like to go through this? Because I think a lot of the noobs don't have any clue what you guys went through to do this. I can tell you we showed up on Wednesday evening and we just stopped, was it yesterday morning? I'm not even sure on the days at this point, but in three days, two all-nighters, a bunch of guys in a room um, and, and our brains are still bleeding a little bit, but uh, we did it. You want a quick comment? Good. Go, 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 go. Quick, quick, quick. We're in a hurry. Uh -huh. Any challenges? I mean, well. Any, anything that was difficult, things you hate me for? Life. Things we hate you for? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we didn't sleep at all. <laughs> I was in a room with a bunch of people who were, and yeah, that's a shout out for everyone else who made us work as hard as we did. We, they, the, my teammates were up in the room and they were like, can we go to sleep yet? And I was like, hell no. We have people on our ass. We're about to lose. So thanks to everyone else who made us try as hard as we did. We'll see you next year. <laughs> So interesting side note, while um, I, I take it upon myself to not go to bed until they do, so if they decide to continue to work, I stay with them. I ride shotgun right alongside all of them. Um, if you notice the code in the program this year and the weird numbers on the pages, it actually decoded to a Google voice number, um, which I'll give to the whole audience and I'll tell you why in a second, and that is 251 a secret which actually called a phone that I kept on my personal conference and from Wednesday on the phone has rung nonstop. So I, I have been getting hundreds and hundreds of uh, Google voicemails and I'm going to actually put them up on a website if anybody's interested to see what crazy ass things you guys say <laughs> into a phone um, that, that you get a random number from a program at a hacker conference. I, it's quite interesting some of the things that come through. Um, my wife was actually saying some of the things were just quite terrifying. <laughs> so, um, Thank you. So one last quick thing. So while we were in the contest room and they were working on, on the batch challenge, the EFF guys tweeted out that no one had solved their shirts so our guys turned their, their guns onto that and we solved it in about 30 minutes. So. <laughs>
Anyway, those of you that competed, thank you very much. Those of you who are new, I encourage you to try your hand. Um, there is a varying level of difficulty. Um, for everything from ROT13 all the way to OTPs in, in cryptologic puzzles to twist your mind. So welcome to DEF CON and thank you very much for, uh, for the teams that make the contest for me what it is. Thank you. All right, last but certainly not least, and this is I think one of the coolest things that happens at the entire conference. We've got the Capture the Flag team, uh, Legitimate Business Syndicate, come on up. Good evening, I'm Vito Genovese from Legitimate Business Syndicate and we've just finished our second year of DEF CON Capture the Flag. First, thanks to the DEF CON organizers, the wonderful goons, our friends and families, and the global Capture the Flag community. We could not do this without your support and friendship. As returning hosts, we decided to step up our game with all new challenges, a new processor architecture, and new evil tricks. The most visible change is the DEF CON Capture the Flag badge, which includes an MSP430 processor, a 900 megahertz radio, and a custom, exploitable networked service called Badger. We also had three ARM services and a service that switched from emulated 386 to ARM halfway through the game. <laughs> we apologize and you're welcome. Also new this year was an attack visualizer on the screen behind us, built by Hoju. This led to the busiest capture the flag room ever. We've had a few growing pains too. A new scoring algorithm designed to keep teams from zeroing out to the bottom of the scoreboard resulted in teams zeroing out to the bottom of the scoreboard. <laughs> We also had hardware crashes that made life difficult for a few teams. We have retabulated the scores to make sure this was handled in a fair way. We know you have improved your capture the flag, or we know you, we know how important your CTF time scores are, so we've recalculated the scores to make it right. We'll be posting details, source code, and database dumps soon. Hi everybody, I'm Gynophage from Legitimate Business Syndicate. All teams have received the Odroid hardware that we hosted the game on this year, so do not expect to see that next year. We're <laughs> stepping up our game even harder next year. They have also, er, each team also received one of the CTF badges to take home with them. We will be releasing source code, build materials, and build sheets for this later on this year. The first place team will receive eight black badges and eight leather jackets. So without further ado, I'd like to announce the winners. In third place, a newcomer to DEF CON CTF, Dragon Sector. Uh, I believe they are from Poland. I believe they are from Poland. In second place, HitCon. From Taiwan. From Taiwan. And. <laughs> yeah, you! And in first place, the returning champions, PPP, the plaid parliament of Pony. It's a fun time. Everyone should try to play. <laughs> it was a great contest and uh, see you guys next year. <laughs>
If you wonder what we do with all of your money, we make cool podiums like this. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, oh, we, oh, we have a surprise announcement to show the depth of commitment our attendees will go to. Come on up. Hey, everyone. My name is Joe Grand. <laughs> no applause, please. Um, okay, so this is, um, we had an opportunity to turn a crazy dinner conversation into a fundraising event by permanently marking the skin of our fine Shaggy from 303. And um, what, what we ended up doing is uh, Shaggy got a really crazy tattoo with my signature on it and a logo of the JTagulator hardware hacking tool I made last year and some amazing art by Eddie. Um, Crypt paid for it, so his signature is on there. And uh, besides being completely insane, Shaggy was like, well, why don't we try to raise money for the EFF at the same time? Uh, so instead of getting mohawks, he decided to brand his skin with this amazing piece of art. If you want to see it on your phone or a computer or whatever, um, go to at Joe Grand. I've been, I live tweeted his event from, was it last night already? Yeah, yeah last night. Um, if you want to see it in person, you can come up here after the event. Eddie's going to be standing with him. He'll lift up his leg, this fine piece of meat right there. And uh, you can throw a few bucks to Eddie, which is all going to go to the EFF. Yeah, here's a sneak peek. Don't show too much. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. And uh, come up, take a look, give some money to Eddie for a little final EFF uh, fundraising. So thanks. And this just shows the commitment of, you know, people that are, people that are doing stuff uh, for DEF CON and for EFF. And, you know, whatever you can do to make a change uh, is appreciated. So thanks. I know, I know. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. All righty. So there's been a lot of rumors floating around. And while I can neither confirm nor deny, I just want to let you know it's about that time to pack your bags. TT, I heard they didn't want to know. No, people didn't want to know. And, and I saw people tweeting stuff out. And so I'm going to confirm that those of you who've been speculating and twittering that we're moving to the Paris. <laughs> But like everything DEF CON, it's not what it seems because we don't want to tell you ahead of time. It's not that we don't trust you. It's that we don't trust you. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> so, so where we're at now, the Rio has about 160,000 square feet of space. And we don't know what happened this year. I mean, it went crazy. Like, we filled up faster. I mean, we have projections. And uh, because we don't take pre-reg, we just have to, we do a lot of math and we look at what Black Hat's doing and we try to guess. But you guys came later than usual and you came in more numbers than usual and it totally screwed us up. So we're worried that, we're worried that 160, from going from 160 to uh, 175,000 square feet, um, oh, the Rio's 175,000, the Paris is 140, that's, that's not going to be enough. So, we've decided we're also going to take over Bally's. So, so if, you combine, if you combine both of the square feet, we're going to go from about 175,000 to 315,000 square feet. So it's sort of like this embarrassment of riches. What do I do with 315,000 square feet? But luckily I have you guys. I've got the community. So we're, it's, uh, it's predictable. We're going to have more villages, more contests. Yes, hardware hacking village will increase in size. <laughs> <laughs> we're, um, how many of you people remember at the old uh, Riviera we had those party spaces on the top floor? Yeah. So we have the entire 26th floor of, uh, of Bally's and we have like six banks of express elevators that only take us there. 
So, so you, can, you can expect to see parties and shit happening on the 26th floor. So uh, I just want to say that we will have plenty of space and we're going to do a lot of cool stuff that we've only been wanting to do over the last few years. So uh, on one hand we got lucky. It was a big surge this year. But next year um, we might actually have to close space off because we're not going to have enough stuff to fill it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sure about that. Um, the other thing is, you know, those of you who are in registration lines that like sucked and were like out there and vortexing around the pool, um, you know, you've never done that before. Normally you did by Friday, normally by Friday evening you guys did halfway through Thursday. So I don't know what happened. The pattern changed. And so next year we're going to have, it's not even going to be funny, we're going to have like registration everywhere. Like there's no way for you not to get registered. Would you like a little registration with that? Yeah. So, so expect uh, more kinds of music, more kinds of parties. Who enjoyed, compared to previous years to this year, the variety of parties we had in spaces? Yeah. Who saw the, uh, the crazy robot army that would dance to your hands? So I love that stuff and with all this space next year we're just going to have more stuff to really showcase what we can do as a community. So, so I'm really looking forward to it. So we might end up working extra hard but it's going to really rock next year. So I just want to give you guys the heads up to, uh, to be ready for that. And to make life a little easier for you guys, it's going to be surrounded by other hotels and uh, so it's easier to, to get to. And so we've done a deal with the Paris Ballets, the people that own those hotels. So we're going to have a bunch of space in the hotels around Paris Ballets. So the rooms are going to start at like $49 a night. Yeah. So, so finally we can get you uh, we can get you cheaper housing and so we're going to have Planet Hollywood, the Flamingo, the Quad, Caesars and Paris and Bally's with good rates. So cool. So before we, uh, before we shut it down and I, I call for a round of applause for everybody, I just want to have everybody acknowledge the awesome work the hotel has done here and how good they've been, a good home for us for so many years and it's sad to outgrow them. But hey, you know, you gotta, you gotta go, you gotta move on, you gotta grow. So let's give a big round of applause for the Rio. They've been awesome. That's it, right? That's it? We're good? Okay, with, so with that, I'm gonna officially call it to a close and I will see you at the bar. Thank you. Thank you.